Hello, and welcome to the third part of the series on using the TI-83 series calculator. This video focuses on order of operations, which is crucial to understand if you're going to use the calculator correctly. If you do not correctly understand this, and you use your calculator incorrectly, this could very easily turn an exam from an A to an F. This is something that you need to know cold before going into an exam. The 83 series understands order of operations. In fact, it understands it better than you do. If you don't believe me now, you will after you type in your first mistake. When you type in 3 plus 4 times 7, the calculator understands this in the same way that you do. You first multiply 4 and 7 before you add 3, resulting in 31. Also notice that there are parentheses above the 8 and 9 buttons. These function exactly like you expect them to. Like if I wanted to add 3 and 4 first, I could put parentheses around them and get 49. Open parentheses, 3 plus 4, close parentheses, times 7, enter, which returns 49. The calculator also understands implicit multiplication, which means that if you have something next to a parentheses, it is implied that you multiply those two things together. So if you have 4 in parentheses and then a 3 outside of it, then that would be 3 times 4. Or in this case, I can also rewrite this 3 plus 4 times 7 without writing the times, and I will still get 49. So open parentheses, 3 plus 4, close parentheses, 7, enter, returns 49. You are often going to need to use parentheses on the calculator more than you would on paper. And this is one of the more difficult things for new users to understand. Now one really cool thing about the 83 is that you can input fractions. The reason why is just because fractions and division are the same thing. 4 fifths is the same thing as 4 divided by 5. So if you want to add 4 fifths to 2 fifths, you simply type 4 divided by 5 plus 2 divided by 5. Now dealing with fractions can be tricky because your calculator is thinking in terms of division rather than fractions. For example, let's type in 5 plus 7 all over 3 plus 2. The correct way to do this is to force the calculator to treat the entire numerator as a whole and the entire denominator as a whole. This means that you need to put the entire numerator in parentheses and the entire denominator in parentheses, like this. A very common mistake that I see is people typing this instead. Your calculator believes that this means 5 plus 7 thirds plus 2, because it does order of operations. Remember that it thinks in terms of division, not fractions. It does the division first, then adds the three parts. This isn't what we're wanting. It's good practice to use parentheses in an almost paranoid way, at least in my experience. For example, if you're trying to type in 4 fifths squared, you might instinctively write 4 divided by 5 squared, but this is the wrong way to do it. This will return 0.16 the 4 fifth squared is actually 0.64. This is because the calculator's order of operations does exponents before division. So when you typed four, when you typed in 4 over 5 squared, it calculated 4 over 25 because 25 is 5 squared. I personally like to put parentheses around all of my numerators when they're more than just one part all of my denominators when they're more than one part, and then around my fractions pretty much always. Even if I don't think it's going to affect the outcome, it's a good habit to have. This is one place where it's good to have OCD. Now notice that you can use your arrow keys to move the cursor left and right, and even up and down if your input string is more than one row. You can do this to type over what you've already entered, but let's assume that I want to add something in. For example, I'm trying to enter this expression. But after I type it, I find that I forgot to type, it, type the first parenthesis. 
I don't want to have to retype the entire expression just for the one parenthesis. But there is thankfully an insert function. It is just to the left of the left arrow key and it's a second function. So to put in the missing parenthesis I move the cursor over the 8 because I want to insert the parenthesis before the 8. The insert will always insert before whatever the cursor is on. So now that my cursor is over the 8 I hit second then INS for insert which is the button with DEL written on it. Now that I'm in insert mode I press the left parenthesis key. When I'm done as soon as I move my cursor it will switch away from insert mode but until you hit an arrow key or the enter key it will stay in insert mode. Now you probably notice that we press the DEL key for the insert function but as you might be able to guess the DEL key is the delete key and it works basically the same as the delete key on a computer keyboard. If I mean to type in 8339 but I accidentally type in 83339 I can put the cursor over one of those threes and hit the delete key to make it back into 8339. The clear button on the far right of the calculator will delete whatever you are typing. Be careful with this because you cannot get it back if you haven't already pressed enter. Pressing clear another time will clear the entire screen which can be convenient if whatever is written above is distracting. Now let's take a trek down to the bottom of the calculator and notice the second function of the enter key which says entry. If you press this it will bring back the last thing that you entered. So say I try to enter 2 plus 7 all over 3 but I make the mistake of not using parentheses. So what I accidentally type is 2 plus 7 thirds. But I don't notice it until after I press enter. If I don't want to retype the entire expression I can hit second entry then move the cursor to the 2 and insert an open parenthesis. Then move the cursor over to the, vision si to the division sign and insert a close parenthesis. I hit enter again and now I have the correct answer. Also notice that if you hit second entry twice it enters the thing that you entered two lines ago and so on. It will do this even if you clear the screen.